The Bible says in Psalms 103 that he knows we're but dust. God knows who we are and how he made us. So I can come to him. I don't have to put on the front or, or put up, be somebody else. I can come to God openly. The other day I had a friend come to me and ask me about prayer. And he was concerned about praying and praying the right way and saying the right words and doing it the right way. And he was just kind of confused about prayer. I think you hear a lot of things about prayer. Sometimes, even growing up myself in church, I heard deacons or, or pastors pray these long prayers using big words. And I felt like I couldn't talk to God. I don't know how to pray. And I remember too, in the youth group I was leading, one girl, she, uh, we're in a circle going right to dismiss and we're praying. And, I said, you want to pray? She's like, I don't know how to pray. And I said, let's talk to God. She'd be in the prayer. She was stumbling over the words. Some of the kids started laughing at her. And I was like, you know, when we're done, I'm like, why are you laughing? She won't talk to me out anyway, <laughs> you know? And I think for me, prayer can be kind of a difficult thing. It's more difficult than it should be. Uh, I struggle sometimes with corporate prayer. Like I'm talking to God, but I know y'all listening to me. And I'm, am I really talking to God or talking to y'all? A little bit of both is kind of weird. But uh, I just, I just reassured him that Prayer, I think, is really just a conversation with God. It's talking to God. It is not a list of gimme, 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 gimme. It is having a conversation with God. And I think it's, you know, sometimes we look at it as we got to stop and pray four hours in the morning or do whatever. I think it's an ongoing thing. Um, Paul says pray without ceasing. Doesn't mean you need to stay on your knees all day long, but I think understanding to practice the presence of God, that God is with me throughout the day. I'm with him, that he's omnipresent. He's everywhere present. And as I go through my day, my thoughts are known before God. Why not just consciously say, God, you know, I give that to you. Um, nothing is hidden before God. He's he, he knows all things. And so I think when we pray, there should be some reverence to our prayer. There should be, I don't approach God as if he's one of my homies down the street in the hood, but I approach him with respect, but I can be open and honest with God. I look at some of the prayers in the Bible from Jehoshaphat, when he prayed, he just, he, he appealed to God's character, who God was. Um, David, when he prayed, he often prayed asking God to kill people. Like, um, just people were able to pray. And I have a book called All the Prayers of the Bible. And sometimes it's good to see how people approach God. And I think the approach is important. Um, I also did a series called When You Pray, and I kind of went through Matthew chapter 6, which I'm going to look through right now for a second, just to talk about um, some ways I think we should pray. And even Lord's Prayer wasn't a use these words necessarily. It was more of a pattern, like he talks about, even before he gets to the Lord's Prayer. And uh, Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 5, he says, And when you pray, you must not like be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues, and on the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. So he says here, when you pray, you don't have to be like the hypocrites, using big words and doing it so you can be seen by people. It, it's a conversation with your heavenly Father. That, that if I'm talking, like when my kids are talking to me, they don't go outside and say, hey, Daddy, why don't you do it? No, they're not trying to show off in front of people. They come to me, and I love the way my kids come to me. And that kind of reminds me, I get to approach God that way. He's my father. Um, the relationship is there. I, need, I can approach him in good times and bad times when I'm messed up. And that's the beautiful thing about God. He's not an angry God in the sky waiting to step on you because you did something wrong, but he's our heavenly father and I can come to him. And here's the thing, he knows anyway. I remember a kid came to me one day and said, Mr. Brown, I don't feel like praying. I was like, well, tell God that because guess what? He knew anyway. And even tell him that you just prayed. Because sometimes I have an attitude. Sometimes my daughter doesn't want to talk to me. My son doesn't want to talk to me. They're mad at me for something I made them do, right? But we can still deal with that. I'm not going to be angry at them. The Bible says in Psalms 103 that he knows we're but dust. God knows who we are and how he made us. So I can come to him. I don't have to put on the front or, or put on, be somebody else. I can come to God openly. In verse 6, he goes, But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray and pray to your father who's in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Now, I don't think we have to just go in a closet, but he's saying, hey, when you pray, it's me and you. It's not about everybody else, it's me and you. And the truth is, you can be driving and praying. Some of my most effective praying, I think, is just journaling to God. I'm, I'm typing, journaling, I'm talking to God, sharing my heart, sharing my thoughts. Um, time when I'm driving, I'm praying, talking to God. He knows my thoughts, and I'm learning to practice the presence of God. So he gives a contrast here. Like the hypocrites, they're doing it for everybody else, but you, hey, it's me and you. Go before your heavenly Father one-on-one -on -one and talk to God. Not that you can't pray corporately, but he said, hey, it's not about the words and about showing other people. It's about me and you. 
Let me skip down to where he talks about pattern of prayer. If you want to know more about what I said about the other parts of this passage, check out uh, When You Pray series, links in the description. But he says in verse 9, pray then like this. It's Jesus teaching us how to pray, teaching disciples how to pray, and we're disciples. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, how will it be your name? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as is in heaven. I like to, I'm, that part. I think that's the reverence part. I come before God, hallowed be your name. Your name is set apart. You're you're different, God. You are God, and I am not God. I'm talk. I I approach you with reverence, with respect, because you're God. But I can be open and honest with you too, and I can share my heart because you're my heavenly Father. He says, um, you know, and I love the fact your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. And I, I like that idea that Jesus says, hey, come with reverence, but also come with the idea that you know who's in control and whose kingdom you're approaching. And I I often think about when someone's sick or someone, you know, has cancer, we want to pray, God, heal them, heal them, you know, take this disease away. And we should cry out to God for our desires. But at the end of the day, your will be done on earth as is in heaven. And even Jesus himself prayed when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He didn't want to go to the cross. He knew the pain and suffering that was before him. And he said, I don't want, it's any other way. Let this cup pass. But ultimately, not my will, but your will be done. So the idea is when I pray, God, I'm going to pray my heart out and pray, heal that person, save that person, do these things, God. Even when my mom was dying, hey, God, please save her, heal my mom of this. But into the day, God, your will be done because it is about you. It's not ultimately about me. And as a believer, I can truly pray that prayer now and, and understand it more that, God, I want your will to be done because into the day, you got this covered. Like, this world is not my home. I will not always be here. I want to enjoy and be, be a good steward of the time and you give me on this earth. But eternity is forever and I get to be with you. That's my security. That's my hope. It's not this world. So I think prayer is something that we make hard and it should be. Um, I think I would suggest you read the Bible, look at some prayers of the Bible, seek God. But I think practicing the presence of God, knowing that God's always with you, come to God in reverence, come to God, uh, understanding it's his will needs to be done, coming to God, knowing that he's your father through Jesus Christ, the intimate relationship, and just pour out your heart to God. It's not a prayer. It's not a uh, to do list, uh, uh, you know, it's not a honey do list to God. It is a conversation, and I think we need to hear from God. And I think the way we hear from God is opening the Bible, reading what God has to say. Can God speak to us? Yes. Can God speak audibly? Yes. Have I heard Him audibly speak to me? No. But sometimes He's spoken to me, and I've heard something so clear. It felt that way. It felt like I didn't hear the voice, but like it was so clear that God said, "Hey, go do this." Um, but I think sometimes we over people. Talk about that as if a God, you know, they God told me, he'll go put on some red socks today. Well, don't, I don't know your relationship with God, but I, I think seeking God, reading the Bible, and practicing the presence of God is, is a great way for you to grow in your relationship. And I think your prayer relationship will, will grow with him. It's not about, hey, I'm gonna get some level of prayer and all this kind of stuff. Listen, God knows you and he wants you to draw close to him. And we can draw close to him in prayer and read the Bible. So those are my thoughts on prayer. Tell me what you think. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment below. Like, subscribe, and share if you're watching on our app. Thank you for downloading our app. If y'all are watching on YouTube, get the app. That way you're not distracted by all the stuff on the side, you know, sidebar right there. I think it's on, it's on this side, I think. All that stuff distracting. Hey, get our app. You can get the teaching right there without being distracted. So anyway, thanks for watching this video, and uh, we want to do all we can to help you live for God by connecting faith and life. Peace.